Hello everybody, welcome back to a few minutes of history. I previously did a video on Hobart's funnies, which is linked in the description. This featured variations of tanks that were designed by Major General Percy Hobart to overcome obstacles that would present major problems on D-Day. There was also another vehicle that would appear to fall into the funnies category, but it wasn't designed by Hobart. It was designed and operated by the Royal Electrical and Mechanical Engineers, or REMI for short, and this vehicle was the Beach Armoured Recovery Vehicle, or the BARV. It was based on the M4A2 Sherman and was intended to be used to recover drowned vehicles and remove beached or damaged landing craft so they wouldn't become obstacles to the subsequent waves of troops. Trials were initially carried out using a turretless Churchill, but this proved difficult to make watertight. So, they trialled the M4A3 Sherman, and although it performed well in the trials, the petrol engine was prone to cutting out if it got wet. So the twin GMC diesel engine variant, the M4A2, was selected, and it began its trials in December 1943. The turret was removed, and an armoured superstructure designed to help the tank float and stop it getting swamped by waves was welded on. The driver and radio operator's hatches were welded shut, as was the machine gun port in the bow. A single vision block was welded in place for the driver, but visibility was extremely limited, even more so than a standard tank. When wading, the driver's vision block was useful for looking at fish, but little else more. Directions instead would be given by the commander, who had to have his head above the superstructure. New hatches were put on top of the tank for divers who would attach tow ropes, and also for the crew to enter and exit the vehicle. A steel tow cable on a winch was fitted to come out of the rear of the vehicle, and wooden planks wrapped in rope were attached to the front to push vehicles or landing craft without causing too much damage to them. Divers were meant to wear diving suits and use breathing apparatus, but getting on and off the tank was difficult enough, so many of them took to holding their breath and diving in their underwear. By the time the trials had finished, it was early 1944. A request for 66 gun tanks was approved, and the conversions began. The deadline was March 1944, Work got underway and 52 of them were completed in time to be issued to units ready for D-Day. During the first hours of Operation Overlord, the Bavs and their crews of Remi recovery mechanics were some of the first troops to land. They came under the same intense fire as the assaulting troops, but unlike them, they had no weapons on their tanks to shoot back. But their efforts were just as crucial as those attacking the enemy. They spent the rest of the invasion keeping the beaches clear of obstacles and recovering vehicles for repair to be put back into the fight to liberate mainland Europe. Their experiences were subtly described in a typical British understatement by Warrant Officer Class 2 Artificer Quartermaster Sergeant, or AQMS for short, Eric Spick, when he said, I looked through the barve windows, there were bullets flying around and one or two bangs going off. They definitely fit into the class of unsung heroes. There are believed to be six Sherman baths still in existence. One of these, which is a veteran of D-Day itself, is on show at the Remy Museum in Lynham in Wiltshire. It is in the site of the old officer's mess of the former RAF Lynham, which is now MOD Lynham, where the training of the Remy's next generations of soldiers, including the recovery mechanics, take place. It's a museum well worth a visit, and they hold many artefacts which are unique to the museum and cannot be seen anywhere else in the world. Well, that concludes today's episode. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Cheery bye.